Content warning, Amori contains depictions of depression, anxiety, and suicide, and may not be suitable for all audiences. It also contains bright flashing imagery that may cause discomfort and or seizures for those with photosensitive epilepsy. Viewer discretion is advised. Amori is an RPG maker adventure game developed by Omocat and published by Playism, originally being a manga series that was created by Omocat. After its discontinuation, a Kickstarter for the Amori game was announced on the 31st of July 2013. On the 5th of June 2014, the game was successfully funded in a little over 30 hours and reached a grand total of $200,000. The game did have a rocky development including transferring from one engine version to another and having to rework the art direction from scratch. Amori was finally released on the 25th of December 2020 to the delight of fans who have been eagerly awaiting for this wonderful game. So, what the frick is Amori? The truth is, your story is already over. You just have to remember it. Our story begins in white space where our title character Amori spends a lot of his time. After checking out the few objects in our vicinity, a knife falls from seemingly nowhere. Heading through the white door, we come to a colourful room where our friends Aubrey, Kel and Hiro are playing cards. The group decides to head to the playground to have a picnic with Mari and Basil. It's a wholesome time. You look at some photos, get roped into playing hide and seek, rescue Basil from a big bully, it's all pretty peaceful. You make your way to Basil's house and after a small altercation. You help put some photos back in the album, but one of them seems to be loose. Basil, is everything okay? <laughs> After leaving Whitespace again, you meet up with everyone who tells you that Basil has gone missing. Now you need to set out on a grand adventure to find where he's gone. You and your friends will travel far and wide, exploring the reaches of space and the underground tunnels of the Sprout Moles. You'll meet a host of lovable and dorky side characters, and it's all super happy fun times with no terrible horrible monstrosities lurking in the dark. That's all we can really say about the story, otherwise we'll give too much away. True, so let's dive into the characters a little. More. Amori is a cliff-faced young boy who has a really interesting life of spending time in white space and spending time with his friends where everything is okay. Aubrey is a headstrong and empathetic young girl with an affinity for cute things and smashing. Kel is a hyperactive lad with a positive outlook and loud personality. Hiro is the charismatic older brother of Kel and is the glue that holds the group together. Mari is Amori's older sister and plays the role of caretaker, being there for the party when they need advice or a picnic. All the side characters drop in and out of the story but are all memorable and even serve as great boss fights. Aren't you forgetting about someone? Um, no, I think that was all of them. Oh dear. You might be wondering, hey, isn't this marked as a horror game? But I mean, come on, what's gonna scare you in this wondrous dream world? It's not like some- Out of the nightmares, but there are a whole host of side quests that really expands the world and brings a lot of charm to this gorgeous game. Like we said earlier, Amori is a difficult game to summarize since you really need to go in as blind as possible and if you are even slightly interested in playing this, I really recommend not looking too much into the story and just experience it at your own pace. Waiting for something to happen? Amori's gameplay is split between exploration and combat. As the world opens up more and more, you'll be jumping between a variety of locations, each with their own obstacles, side quests, and secrets to uncover. You'll constantly come across watermelons that hold consumables and new equipment for your party. Getting through some areas requires the use of the tag system to switch out the leader. Amori can cut things with his knife, Aubrey can smash objects with her bat, Kel can throw a ball to hit switches, and Hero will charm the pants off an NPC to get them to help you. A lot of side quests you can find are simple fetch quests, but can also lean into the absurd. The combat is a lot more complex than how it appears at a glance. It's a turn-based system where you choose everyone's actions from basic attacks and skills to using snacks and toys. You have hearts as your health and juice as your MP. Each character fills a different role. Amori has a lot of skills for dealing damage and reducing enemy stats. Aubrey is a tank with high health and heavy blunt force damage. Kel is a speedy damage dealer with a lot of skills to mess with foes and Hero is the party support. You can perform follow-up moves after basic attacks using energy and 
and these can really shake up a battle. For example, if Aubrey looks at Amori, she'll attack again but even harder this time to try and get Amori's attention. Don't worry if you can't remember everything. Hero gives you some guides you can always refer to for a reminder. If the energy gauge is full, you can release the energy for an all-out attack. You never see it come the emotion system is also in play and works like rock, paper, scissors. You and your foes can inflict emotions and these can change your stats. Happy increases your luck and speed but reduces your hit rate. Angry increases attack but decreases defense and sad increases defense, reduces speed and a portion of damage to your heart is taken from your juice. You also need to consider the weakness of one emotion versus another when battling. Happy beats angry, angry beats sad and sad beats happy. There are also different levels to each emotion that makes the stat changes even bigger. Okay, calm down Amori. This makes boss fights a fun balancing act of dealing damage and keeping everyone's emotions in check so they aren't getting one shot. Skills come in a wide variety and each character learns new ones from leveling up and completing certain quests. You can only have four equipped per character so make sure you check them out and plan a strategy before getting into tough fights. A lot of the skills are also affected by emotions and can lead to insane combinations. As is the nature of an RPG, there is leveling and equipment that can change your stats. The game has a few areas Areas for grinding if you need, but aside from a few instances, you should be able to get by pretty easily. Just keep those emotions in check and remember to check every nook and cranny for cool new equipment. Did you see it too? Something, Something behind you. Amori is a 2D visual spectacle. RPG Maker kind of has this look. Whenever you see a game made in this super popular engine, you get an idea of what you're in for. This means it's incredibly important to have something that makes it stand out, and Amori has this in spades. White space is the simplest area with the black and white pixel art and basic sprite work. But once you leave through this oddly detailed door, a colorful explosion greets your eyes. I love how much of the line art is colored, giving it a much softer, almost pastel look at times. Areas are super distinct from each other. I love the vast forest, getting lost staring at the giant pinwheels or traveling to the shoe house. Other worlds adorable pink landscapes and strange inhabitants make it such a treat for a space area. The battle screen has this great hand-drawn style. It's super colorful and makes every character really expressive. It's also easy to read and see all the information that you need to smash those tofu hogging sprout moles. Animations are also just great, being hand-drawn special effects and seeing how the emotions affect each character really tells you a lot about them. Most enemies are very cute and cuddly creatures while bosses tend to be of the more humanoid variety. But a great visual style only makes up half of the wonderful presentation. The sound effects are perfect. The crushing blows from Aubrey's bat. The thuds from a bunny knocking into your party. The adorable beats of a heart rate monitor. <laughs> and of course the little squish when you step on an egg. Why are you staring at me like that? No reason. The soundtrack has shot up as one of my favorites in gaming. A lot of tracks when exploring have an ethereal nature while fitting in with their respective locations. Battle tunes also change depending on where you are and they are all high energy bops. The boss themes are in a league of their own. Just listen to these and try not to get hyped. Sometimes the music goes into the more spooky vibes, but it's never anything too scary. Scary, 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 scary. Also, the fanfare after winning a battle is the best. The creators have done a fantastic job at showcasing their artistic and musical talents. Don't worry, everything is going to be okay. Amori is an exceptional title that was well worth the long development time. If you love RPGs with unique mechanics, a gorgeous and adorable art style and music that will worm its way into your brain, then Amori is for you. The game is available on PC and Mac with a PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch port in the future. I hope that everything is okay.